Do you have music CDs in your collection that you don't really want and are just taking up space? Then swap them out. Details coming up. Over the years, I've acquired about 7,000 music titles on CD. Many of these were acquired through retailers or thrift outlets, but many others I acquired through trade, primarily online trade. In this video, I'm going to discuss online trading of CDs and how it has evolved over the years. Before getting into online trading, I would like to talk about swapping music in general. My first CD trade occurred in 1987 when I swapped my copy of Def Leppard Hysteria for a friend's copy of Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. My friend liked the way Def Leppard sounded on his kickers, and I liked the grit and attitude of GNR. I traded other music as well. I was a member of the BMG Music Club, and some of the titles I acquired didn't suit me, so I would sometimes take them to CD Warehouse and other retailers who dealt in used CDs and swap them for other music. But when using retail shops for trade, I would get less than I gave. I had another friend who subscribed to Goldmine Magazine. In the classifieds, you could find music titles for sale, but some of the folks who posted classifieds would also be willing to trade. Also, there have been swap meets for trading music for decades, and CDs entered the mix at these meets back in the 1980s. When I first acquired internet back in 1996, the most prevalent social network was Usenet. News groups were primarily used for discussion of topics, but they were sometimes also used to set up transactions. There was a discussion group created specifically for trading music called Alt Trade Compact Discs, but it never generated much traffic. I saw many more trades happen on Rec Audio Opinion, a discussion group for audio enthusiasts that remains active to this day in the form of Google Groups, with the link provided in the description. Other forums where trades could be established were Yahoo Groups and Craigslist, but neither of these were specific for CD media. The first website dedicated to bartering goods, including media, was SwapRat.com, established in July 1999, later retitled Switch House in 2000. They set up direct buying, selling, and trading of secondhand goods with a concentration on multimedia. Switch House charged 10% on sales but offered trades for free. One limitation of this type of network was finding mutual trades. The company couldn't make a go of it and shut down in 2002. There's an article about this on ZDNet. In 2004, Title Trader was the first credit-based website where you could swap CDs. The website was primarily for the exchange of books, but CDs and DVDs could be traded as well. Members could set a credit price for items. This almost made it like a cash site instead of a trade site. The Title Trader website still exists, but never really gained enough critical mass to be an effective place to trade CDs. 2006 proved to be a banner year for trading media, especially CDs on the internet with the launch of Zunafish, Swaptree, Lala, and Swap a CD. Zunafish launched in January 2006 and set up direct transactions between members. Items for trade included books, CDs, DVDs, video games, and VHS tapes. Users would post items for trade along with items they wanted. The platform set up direct trades between users and charged $1 to the recipient of each transaction. In 2006, both Time Magazine and PC Magazine recognized this site with awards. However, they couldn't make a go of it and in 2009 the site went down for maintenance and never reappeared. Swaptree, later renamed Swap.com, started in 2006 as a place to exchange books, CDs, DVDs, and video games. Like Zunafish, users would add items for trade along with items they wanted to a wish list. The website would then set up either peer-to-peer -peer trades or trade rings involving multiple parties. The ability to establish multi-party trades offered greater possibilities but also meant a higher likelihood of trades getting cancelled. The site developed a large user base with over 2 million media swaps over the lifetime of the website, but there were no transaction fees. 
Monetization was through prepaid postage sold through the website, but this postage was not a requirement for users. In 2010, the website was changed to swap.com, but continued the same service. In 2013, the company was sold, warehoused consignment items were added, and the peer-to-peer -peer media exchange feature was phased out. As a member of Swap.com, I was disappointed in this change. The early leader in online CD trading was Lala, launched on July 4, 2006. Trading was restricted to music CDs with no DVDs or games in the mix. Unlike Zunafish or Swaptree, Lala was credit-based so it did not suffer from the restrictions of peer-to-peer -peer algorithms. It offered both CD trades and was also a pioneer for music streaming. Users listed CDs they had for trade and CDs they wanted. The website charged $1 for each trade and provided CD sleeves like this one as well as envelope mailers. A large trading community developed within this website, but there were issues. Many CD enthusiasts want art with their music, but at Lala, art was optional. Also, when mailed, art would often be folded in order to fit into the mailers. The cardboard sleeve did not ensure that the disc was protected, so discs would sometimes arrive broken. The algorithm that determined who received high-demand CDs was not transparent, relying on a feature they called Karma that was not clearly defined. I was never a member of Lala, but I've heard other former members complain about receiving scratched up music CDs, especially toward the end of their run. In December 2009, coinciding with a buyout by Apple, Lala discontinued their trading service. However, the forum from Lala has lived on as music gourmets, but trading on that site is gone. Swap a CD was another credit-based CD trading website launched in 2006. It was the sister site of an established credit-based book site, Paperback Swap, that had been launched two years prior. Like Lala, the website received a fee for each transaction, but in the case of Swap a CD, this fee was only 49 cents. Credits could be transferred between Paperback Swap and later Swap a DVD. I jumped on board back in 2008 and participated in over 3,000 trades on that website since then. The algorithm uses a rank and positioning system to determine who gets certain trades. It is partially first come first serve, but when you rank a want higher in your list, it is possible to leapfrog others who have been wanting the disc for a longer period of time. It is possible to pull up a graph that shows you where you are in relation to others who want the same disc and adjust the ranking so that you have a better chance of getting the disc sooner. Discs are required to be playable and unlike Lala, inclusion of art or no art is selectable when posting discs and adding discs to your wish list. If you are fine with disc only, you can often get music when the other folks who want it also want the art. There's an active online forum with a special section for unpostable discs. And some shippers offer special deals with CD requests. When you post a CD is available for trade, you are fully expected to ship it when there is a request, and you have to fill out an explanation if you cannot ship it. Much of what is immediately available is typical bargain bin fare, but with patience and a bit of luck, some rare items can be acquired. For example, I received these two sealed import titles through Swap a CD. In addition to acquisition of credits through trade, you can also purchase them through the website for $3.95 each, or from other members through the forums at a minimum price of $3 each. The most frequent complaint about this website is the mailing requirements, which are minimal. Here's an example of a package I received recently. This package arrived in the mail today from SwapaCD.com. I can already tell it's broken because CDs don't bend like this. So let's open this up and see what we got. Wrapped in paper. Very much broken, broken right in half. Discs sometimes arrive like this one. Users are reimbursed their credit and fee when this happens. Some traders go beyond the minimum standards and ship discs in hard cardboard mailers or with their jewel cases. Despite an occasional hiccup with the website, 
This side is still going strong today. The final credit-based trading site that I want to discuss in this video is MusicBoomerang.com. Established in 2008, this site is strictly for CD trading with no other types of multimedia offered, keeping the goal of this website pure. Many Music Boomerang members were former Law Law users who moved over once Law Law was in decline. The founder of Music Boomerang is an active trader himself and an active participant in the forums. The transaction fee on this site is $1 per disc. Art is specified when adding discs to your have and want list and so is promotional status as some folks do not want promo discs. Here's an example of typical packaging with the Music Boomerang trade. The site welcomes new members with a starter pack of five boom boxes. These first five mailers, along with the first trade credit, are free for joining. With the better packaging and higher transaction fee, costs are a bit higher than swap a CD, but high quality, in-demand titles are frequently traded on this site. Music Boomerang members offer both great music titles and a strong sense of community, with active discussion forums that are not limited to talk about trading CDs. Allocation of ships are based on a user's boom score that is determined by frequency of site visits, quick ships, successful ships, request of available CDs, length of time on want list, last ship, last receive, shipping popular titles, and a random factor thrown in for good measure. The uncertainty of who will receive a shipment makes possible special events that can be found in the forums, such as Buried in Music, ship trains, and the holiday ship extravaganza. For more details, visit the Music Boomerang website. The link is in my description. You may have noticed that I left out Amazon Marketplace, eBay, Discogs, Second Spin, and Declutter. I would categorize transactions on these platforms as buying and selling, and therefore fall outside of trade, as they do not set up peer-to-peer -peer trades and they do not use trade credits. As retail stores phase out music CDs and emphasis switches to streaming in various file formats, I'm glad there are still places for CD enthusiasts to trade and discuss their music hobby. Much of the information presented in this video was researched using Wikipedia and archive.org, with other contributions from members of the Music Boomerang forums. Thank you for your help. If you enjoyed this video or any other in the Thrifty AV series, please like and subscribe. Also, I want to send a thank you to my patrons. Stay thrifty, everyone.